Okay, going back. I caught it while it was still shutting down the AS Rock. And there, my driver's installed still. Um, it just got through installing a application to do with the uh, LAN drivers. Oh, well, it's not. It's really an application to. It seems like it's there to get it shut down. Oh yeah, I got to get ready to hit. It's going to reboot, so got to get ready to hit F11. Anyway, I kind of remember that that application. I wasn't able to use it before when, when I had, you know, installed all this on the 32-bit Windows 7 that was on here. Okay, so there, yeah. I just always do that to make sure it doesn't do something before I get a chance to figure out what I want to do. So that's the right hard drive. It's it's uh, the first hard drive. It's the one default boot order. So anyway, <coughs> that program. I was looking at it in the in my de in my desk while I was making my desktop video. Uh, I believe I may have to uninstall it. Well, well, for one thing, it lost the Ethernet connection. Let's see if it comes back after a reboot. But it seems like I remember that w program was really odd and I couldn't use it, and so I think I took it out of there, which is probably what I have to do. Luckily, I do have an application already installed on here called uh, Revo Uninstaller. It's really good. It uh, Use it to uninstall programs uh, that you don't want. If you get something on there you don't want, and it will not only just uninstall it like the regular Windows uninstaller, but it will clean the registry, look for any uh, left behind registry entries and files, even. Uh, you know, like a lot of programs will leave uh, some of their control applications like Norton Utilities and all that, Semantic and all that stuff. They're terrible about that. <laughs> There you go, it's making its welcome music. So uh, let me get logged in here. <coughs> so anyway, uh, Revo, Revo Uninstaller can take care of all that for me. <coughs> I'm not really trying to show the... not. I'm just doing that so I can see my keyboard and get the phone out of my face there. I just figured that was better than wagging it around, you know. I mean, I probably was wagging it around a little bit, but... <coughs> but, you know, whenever I try to look over the phone or under the phone to type, then it, I don't even know where I'm aiming it, so... So I, we're not done installing drivers yet, and, I, and applications, you know, I, I don't know why I didn't pay more attention. I usually am very meticulous about all that, but I kept thinking I just want to do what's quick and easy, which I should have realized, well, all those extra apps that you're not even going to want are not going to be quicker and easy. It's going to take more time. So yeah, if you've never done this, uh, installed it from a driver CD before, there's usually a bunch of extra software. And uh, chances are you're not going to want a lot of it. So, uh, like for instance, Adobe Reader's a good software to have, but it's going to install an older version. And you could, you know, just go. You can't. I mean, you can just let it update itself, but it might be four or five versions behind. It's. I see it right there. It's, uh, Adobe Reader Nine, not too awfully old. But uh, well, actually, I can't remember. I, like I, I don't keep up with. Uh, what's the newest one with that? So could be on 10, 11, 12. I mean, I know we're on 10 or 11, probably 12, 13, 14. I don't know what, what it's on right now. But yeah, AS Rock uh, Fastland. See, I still don't have a, a network connection. I can see the error message right there. It says it's installing Smart View, something else. No network access. Well, I don't know why. I'm, I don't want to go through this on my phone video. I just wanted to get it booted back up and everything. So, um... Yeah, let me get off of here and get back on the desktop video. Then I can actually show what I want to show. Looks like it opened up Firefox. Okay, bye.